Let's call this meeting to order. So, thank you all for coming out. This is such an important discussion we're having. And I want to assure you that the, the goal here is to try to figure out how we can continue the um, having Callis be run by volunteers. We always have, we've always had lots of people willing to step up and help. That's who we are in, excuse me, that's who we are in Callis. But we've been noticing, we've all been noticing, <coughs> modern life gets increasingly complex. And we're finding it harder and harder to find volunteers who are able to do this job. <coughs> What's happened is we've become um, so we spend so much more time now trying to navigate the legal, <coughs> excuse me, the legal, um, the new legal hoops that we have to jump through all the time. And the processes that we're expected to file, that we are finding ourselves um, unable to do the job without investing a lot more time that makes it very difficult for people to volunteer. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. We want to figure out how to be really smart about how we organize ourselves so that we can continue our tradition of volunteers running our town, but how we can structure our uh, personnel situation so that it's, um, it's manageable for people who are very busy, who have jobs, who have families. Um, Donna has been, uh, we, oh, let me stop a minute. We, did any, did Sharon or Paul show up? I was hoping we would get some past select board members and Judy didn't come either. She's in Maine. She's in, <laughs> oh, well, drat, okay. So I was, uh, we're all new at this, as you know, so we don't have the long-term perspective to talk about how things have changed, but we do have, we can talk a little bit about that as we go through this. So Donna has been doing a lot of work, hours and hours of work. Donna's part of the Fitch dynasty. Her family's, her family's been helping. Recording in progress. <laughs> Just missed it. <laughs> her family's been helping to run this town for generations, right? At least yeah. two, probably more. Well, my grandfather too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Donna certainly has the long-term perspective. Donna's also been our town clerk and treasurer. So she's, she's really familiar with how Callis works and has worked in the past. Donna's been gathering information about um, how other towns, are t the other towns are finding themselves in this same position and how they're trying to restructure themselves to deal with all these issues. Um, she's gathered all kinds of information, she's interviewed all kinds of people, and she's put together a lot of information that can help us. So the plan is, to have Donna talk about this. Um, and then we, I was hoping to get some of these other people who've been around for years to comment. If they come, I'll give them each a chance to talk. And by being around, I mean serving in some of these positions. And then I'm gonna give all of you a chance to ask questions. Um, just to be sure we've all get the same information. People on Zoom, when we get into that period, You'll be able to um, raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Uh, Tegan is going to be watching the chat. If you prefer to write a question, Tegan can read it to us. Um, and then we'll open it up for opinions, uh, discussion, thoughts, concerns. We, might, we have to stop at 7. We have to stop at 7 because at that point the treasurer is coming in to help us set the tax rate. <laughs> for the next year, and that has to be done. So if we get to um, a point where we think we need to continue the discussion, we'll figure out then whether what we need to do is just continue it at another regularly scheduled meeting or whether we actually need to have a special meeting just for this topic. So at this point, are there any questions about how we're gonna proceed? That all clear? Okay, with that, Donna, can you tell us about your yes. research? So there's a pack at the, on the table by the door if everybody picked it up. <clears throat> and the first uh, four pages are organizational charts. And 
I'll go over these, and John's over there with the charts on the screen. But also in this packet is um, three other handouts, and one is um, possible options for managing the workload of the town of Callas, and that's what we'll be going over tonight. Um, another document is why create a new position. And then the uh, last document is the possible job resp responsibilities of a new position. So I thought it would be helpful if we started off with how is the town currently organized? And that's what's up there now. Um, so all the hired and appointed employees and volunteers report to the select board. And all commissions and committees report to the select board. Um, the town clerk is hired, and the town clerk appoints the assistant <coughs> town clerk. Please, she's elected. I mean, she's elected, yeah, <laughs> is elected. And um, hires the assistant town clerk. Now, in the past years, we've had the same person as the assistant town clerk and the treasurer. Um, and then, and now we have a select board administrator appointed on an interim basis. Um, now, by the way, those of you who don't have them, they're over there. If you want to pick these up and look at them. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> um, so if you look at this, we have, um, we no longer have a highway operations manager. The person in that position is now um, the Highway Grants Administrator. Um, <clears throat> and two select board members have been appointed to act as the road commissioner. And then down the bottom here, you'll see the other elected positions. So I think what this points out is all the people and all the activities of all these people that um, the select board is responsible for. So if you go to the next one, page two, this is a possible option. And these next three are just possible options that I've researched um, that the town might choose from or change around a little bit. So the town manager form of government is, it's defined in state statute. So the select board would hire that person and that person would report to the select board. Um, but in many ways, they're very independent. And in this scenario, the only positions reporting to the select board are the town manager and the commissions and committees. Everybody else would report to the town manager. And by statute, the town manager is also the road commissioner. Um, and in this uh, organization, we no longer have the operations manager. Um, grants would become the responsibility of the town manager. And that's why we have here an assistant to the town manager part time. Because if the town manager is um, managing employees, all these projects, and if they're doing grants, they may need some assistance, especially with the grants. Um, also, in this situation, um, the idea is that the road foreman would spend part of their time doing all the paperwork. But then in the winter, when there's fewer road projects, the road foreman could become, um, you know, one of the one of the road crew, and that might eliminate some of the part-time road crew positions that we have now. Now. Uh, there's a union now, so I'm not sure if that would work out, but it, it is one idea. Um, now on page three, this is a town administrator. And the town administrator would be hired by the select board, but the select board determines the town administrator's responsibilities. So the select board has a lot more input into what that person's job would be. And here we have the assistant clerk and treasurer. And then we have a part-time assistant for the town administrator.
and the town administrator would be responsible probably for grants with help from their assistant. Now on page four is, it's the same as the town administrator, but it has one municipal assistant, and that assistant would support the town clerk and the town administrator. Now the town clerk, um, you know, hires the assistant town clerk, so I'm not sure how that would work out, but you can see that to the left of the town administrator, we have the position of municipal assistant. This happens to be um, the way East Montpelier is set up. They have one person in the office that supports the office. And I think that regardless of the title of, of this newly created position um, that would support the work of the select board, you know, whether it's a town manager or a town administrator, or a select board administrator, um, there's someone that's dedicated to handling the business of the town on a day-to-day -day basis and in a timely fashion, alleviating the strain in the volunteer board. And as Anne said, one of our motivations for going through this process is so that younger people can serve on the board when they have full-time jobs and families. You want to take questions, Al, about this? Uh, sure. <clears throat> Questions just about these organizational charts. Yeah. You have other documents to walk us through, right? Well, um, this one, why create a new position? Mm. Um, <coughs> is some of the thoughts that went into why do we need to create a new position? Do you have that to put up on, on here? No, he doesn't have it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, but John's got his own thing going. Oh, I see. John's got this up here. Do you want to use this? I don't know if you want me to read through this. I think you all have it. Um, well, I noticed some of you have the packets, but not all of you. Um, so, uh, I guess. John, if How I email this to you really quickly, can you just throw yeah. it up? Okay. I, mean, I don't know if you want me to read through this. I mean, it's pretty no, long. No, <laughs> let's not read through this. Uh, yes. Uh, Do you have a thought? Paso Ewing, um, you want me to identify street name, street, <laughs> 1553 Robinson Hill. No, you don't need to do that, okay. but you do need to say your name. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, it's just sound, it looks as though it's basically the same structure where you're doing as you're hiring somebody in the middle there so the select people don't have to handle everything. So it's funneling down into an administrator or a man, town manager. What's, what's the difference between the two titles? If I have my packet, I might be able to find that. Um, well, the, the town manager is defined in statute. So, um, I don't know <clears throat> Donna, as I recall, the town manager can only be fired for cause, whereas the town administrator reports directly to the select board and works under the select board. The town manager does not. Right, so this is from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The town manager is a statutory position in which the state vests with the manager much of the day-to-day -day managerial authority of the town, which is normally reserved for the select board. So for example, the manager would be responsible for personnel, highway maintenance, supervision of public buildings, etc leaving the select board to focus on overarching policy decisions, adopting policies and ordinances, preparing town meeting, holding hearings on zoning and town plan updates, among other things. Towns that want to relinquish control of the day-to-day -day operations generally prefer to use the town manager form of government. But the town administrator would be defined by the select board. So also in this packet is, um, description of job responsibilities. These are some of the responsibilities that a town administrator, and the select board would have control over what that person does. So East Montpelier, oh, sorry, right back. East Montpelier has the administrative model, and what, what are their- they have, they have a town administrator. Yeah. Um, 
she's also the um, she's also the road commissioner along with one select board member. Are there smaller towns that use the town manager position, or is that it's usually larger? it's usually larger towns that have the town manager. A lot more towns have town administrators. And I can see that Callis might want a town administrator because it seems like you have more control over what that person does. Is the salary a big difference? Well, we haven't talked salary yet. But I mean generally as a manager? Generally a manager's paid more, yeah. Because it's a bigger, usually they're in bigger cities. But also they have more responsibilities. They right. do not ask the select board for permission to do a lot of things that they would do. They would just, they would have more day-to-day -day running of the town without reference to us. Jordan. Uh, I was curious, Donna, in your conversations with the other towns that uh, when mm -hmm. you were discussing administrator versus manager, whether or not they had alluded to any challenges filling either of the positions, like is, is there a wider pool of candidates for the manager position because it has greater responsibility and statutory protections or? Um, well, I don't think that ever really came up because we all know the job market's very strange right now. For sure. <laughs> so no, I never really had that conversation about, you know, town's history of, was it easier to hire a manager than an administrator? Yeah. Okay, Charlotte? Um, it seems to me that in all your uh, different models, the <clears throat> administrator or manager, that there are actually two new positions. There's the assistant. We already have a, an assistant to the town clerk and <coughs> treasurer, but each of these new positions has an assistant. Well, well this is. Um, <coughs> I mean, right now we have an assistant town clerk, treasurer, and select board administrator that's one person. But I don't think that can continue like that. Um, we never used to have an assistant treasurer until we had to have separation of duties, and that's when the town clerk assistant also took on some of the duties of the, of the assistant treasurer. Um, now we really have Nemrick filling that position because they are, they're doing payroll, they're doing um, monthly reconciliations, so that separation of duties has kind of changed since since past, since the past. And so, so this, um, um, well, on page four, the municipal assistant is one person. Yeah. And on the, the assistant, the part-time assistant to the town administrator, um, which is on page three, um, and then also the manager on page two, um, the reason I put that there is because of grants. And you know, if, if a town administrator is going to be doing grants, which we seem to have more and more of, um, you know, they may need a part-time person. Um, but the other thing about a municipal assistant is to create a job that is really a full, whole job with, a, with responsibility um, that's a fulfilling position, rather than having two or three assistants. And also not a part-time position because I because I believe it's harder to hire part-time than it is full-time. So I think that that was part of one of the things right. we talked about with right. having a, a full office assistant. Mm -hmm. um, can I follow up and ask? Yes. Uh, do grants actually bring in income for the town that we wouldn't otherwise have? Are they um, that would be the whole good investment? I guess is what I'm asking. Yes. Um, Thank right. you. The nods. The nods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. And I think also, remember, we have a part time person, Toby, mm -hmm. Toby. who mm -hmm. does a lot of the grants yeah. now. So that's, it looks like two new cre positions created, but it's absorbing mm -hmm. that position and okay. parts of. Yes, yeah, certainly we have lots of high grants, and yeah. that's our biggest. Yeah, exactly. Got that. Thank you. Other questions on the, the organizational charts and the differences and how they would work? I just want to make one clarification that, that even, even the highway grants administrator, 
that is an interim, like, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us really <coughs> get back on track mm -hmm. type of a situation. So, um, so really most, uh, with the exception of town clerk and parts of Barbara's job, everybody else is interim. <coughs> And compensated. I think it's important to note that they're in term and, and compensated. So those co we're realizing those costs already as a town, as we're trying to f to fill those responsibilities. We're just doing it with several part time individuals who have generously volunteered the, the time and the capacity um, for for modest compensation. I've got another question, I guess, uh, about personnel management. So with the town manager or administrator, if the select board determines that um, it would be appropriate to add an a term, interim position for FEMA grants, for example, just a very specific task-based interim position, would the select board still have the, uh, the authority to create that position and delegate that responsibility, or would that then go through the manager? I would, I would think the manager would work with the select board. I mean, I don't, I don't really, I don't have the full statue in front of me. Um, You're asking if the, fee, the town manager could just decide, hey, we need this FEMA person mm -hmm. and, and do it. Hmm. And, and not consult with the select board, right? And not consult with the select board. I don't know the direct answer to that, although we control the budget. Right, exactly. <laughs> so um, I would think that that would mean that he would have to ask us. Yeah. I would also think we'd be looking for someone who, even if they were a town manager with certain statutory, um, you know, responsibilities, that they would still be a collaborative personality yes. that yeah. wouldn't be looking to do things, you know, outside of the understanding of the select board. Well, you, sound, you yeah. sound like you know something yes. about this. No, I had a question about it. That was, oh. I raised my hand a little bit about Jennifer Whitman. Um, I think that was my biggest question from the beginning is, as a town, we think of like, we elect the select board to make decisions. We think there's a variety of opinions and personalities and backgrounds that kind of all sugar down to a final decision on something. So I guess, and I totally understand the amount of work that everybody is doing. Um, so I guess, yes, then throwing it to one person also seems like it could be another place for some volatility to come up. If, so, if person, that one person has a lot of decision making, or if that person isn't the collab collaborator. Like, well, I don't think we're throwing it all at one person, and especially if it's a town administrator, the select board can determine what that person does. Okay. So, uh, and I, th I think a lot of it is, um, I mean, we had our old select board just went away, you know, they, some, some of them didn't run again and some of them resigned. And there's, there's just so much work and so much pressure on the select board that they need help. So we're talking about somebody who, you know, maybe has a background in human resources and administrative and management that would support the select board. They're really there to support the select board. Yeah. Okay. And they're, so they're not going to be making even major decisions no. no, no, they're just going to put, they, they would do a lot of the research to bring to the select board and then the select board would make the decision. I think it's important to note that this, this is in, an, in and of itself is an important conversation that you would want the select board to continue to have, but this is a conversation that we have struggled to jump into as a new select board as we've tried to get up to speed on all of the administrative responsibilities that are, that are more, um, that are more habitual and, and required by statute. There's, there's just a scope of work that is just regular operating responsibilities that, um, that if you're trying to do a really good job staying on top of those really hinders the ability to do the longer term planning um, that's, uh, that's involved in these types of conversations. And I think that's, that's really why we're trying to have the conversation and move in that direction. Jamie was... Oh, yeah, I was just going to sort of jump back on the conversation about it being two different positions. And, and part of the benefit of that is when you sit down and start looking at all the things that we're asking this one person to do, 
A, it's really more than one job, and B, it's a, it's a wide range of skill sets, right? So to find one person who can both, uh, you know, lead the road crew and make decisions and knows how to, you know, jump in and make decisions on fixing an excavator and um, all that, who's also a really good grant writer, is they're very different skill sets. So you could pair people in the two positions to sort of cover the breadth of that. So I want to note that two of our former select board chairs have now arrived. Yeah. And there's Paul Hannon and Put next to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely want to give you guys a chance to respond to some of these things. And I see Sharon has something to say. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to say that just so I can see you guys. Uh, I want to just uh, build on the point that George was making a minute ago and just applaud you for thinking in this thinking in this way because having this conversation in a with every single person on the board buying into it means that you're entering a spirit of delegation regardless of the model you're talking about delegating a lot of the day-to-day -day work so that you can be leaders and that can be really scary because doing work can keep you keep you busy and occupied and feeling satisfied but in my experience, it isn't what gets the work of the town done. Leadership and being able to look ahead and, and, and trust that you have strong staff to do the work that you, that you have uh, shaped, that you've decided what work you want to delegate, and you have uh, a pulse on oversight, but you're letting other people be involved and make a contribution so that you can be leaders. I think that's really courageous, so thank you for working on this. Thanks, Sharon. I think that's a really good point, Sharon. Willa, you had a question? Um, I'm wondering, Donna, in your research, it sounds like the town, the town manager would be a bigger shift for a town, for towns than town administrator. Yeah, that's how I view it. Yeah. And I'm wondering in your research if you, uh, if people talked to you about when they made a switch, like if you heard anything about what was the transition like, how did people in the town? I guess I didn't talk to enough town managers to to be able to answer that question, but I think um, I think towns they, they they come to the same situation we're in now, where there's just so much more work and, and like in the skills that you need to deal with some of these issues, um, they just had to figure out a way to uh, to do the work, and then they moved to the town administrator. What are the benefits to a town manager? I feel like, oh, you've talked about the town manager being statutory, which means it's more specific and more regulated. Why would you choose a town manager position over a town I, I manager? I personally wouldn't. But what, then, like, <laughs> why is it an option? Why do people uh, because I, that way? Because I went through this with a select board, and they asked me to present all of them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, in general, my understanding is that the town manager position is more prestigious. People actually train for these jobs and they're not gonna to wanna to just be an administrator. So it could give us the opportunity to talk to people with, with the actual skills that, you know, more of the skills that we need. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Karen Bunnings. Um I just had a question about, um, would the town administrator as opposed to the town manager take enough pressure off of you guys? <laughs> like the town manager would take a lot of pressure off of you. But would the town administrator take enough of the pressure off you? Or would that just be another person you have to watch and see? <coughs> that's, that's the question I have. We certainly hope it would. Um, that would be the idea uh, if we could find the right person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not just supervision. I mean, take, for example, our response to the, the flood which, of course, none of us had ever done anything like that before. We spent hours, I think every one of us, spent hours and hours. Anne's been learning a lot about how the road crew works. You're working like 10-hour days sometimes just on roads. Am I correct in that? Maybe I am not. working my actual job during that time. That's right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but you've been through hours. Hours. Yeah. Uh, Jordan spent a lot of time figuring out, we, we're trying to get the gravel pit open on the, at the other end of town here for the short term. Jordan spent hours and hours researching how you would do that. 
Jamie has been focusing on the Curtis Pond Dam and spent hours just trying to understand the processes and the hoops we have to jump through. Um, Gabrielle's been working a lot on the finance, the FEMA part. How do we get, how do we get through to the FEMA stuff? And I, I don't know, I guess I've just been trying to help everybody. Um, and has been taking all of the phone calls. <laughs> and a full-time job. No, seriously, I've been spending, I think t sat, last yesterday was the first day I didn't work on select board related stuff for several hours since the, uh, and Saturday afternoon since the, uh, this started. So my point is that almost everything all of us did could have been done by somebody who, like that, a town manager, and they could have then come to us, a town manager or administrator, with the information. We could have looked at it, had a discussion about it, and made the decisions that it would be appropriate for us to make, and delegate the decisions that it's appropriate for someone else to make. Now, whether one person's going to take all that, be able to do all that, I guess we'd, we'd learn as we went along. Seaver, you want to That was just my question, Seaver. Well, yeah. um, you're, you're talking about all the work you did, and then you're thinking that one person is going to be able to do all of that. Right. I think yeah. that's a leap. Yeah. I, I agree that having an administrator makes more sense to me because you have control over what the job description is, and it can change over time. If something isn't working, you can modify the description to fit what you need. Okay, remember though, I was talking about a very unusual circumstance yeah, in the example I, I just gave. Normally, we don't have that much we have to deal with. I, I understand, but it's just sort of like in that situation, it's all hands on deck anyway. Everybody's got to kind of pitch in and Th that's in true. That situation, everybody had to do different things. So here, here's a very little example then. We got a phone call once that, uh, a few weeks ago that there was a hazmat spill mm -hmm. over on Moscow Woods Road. Um, Jamie and I had to go over there, meet with the crew, figure out what were our responsibilities versus the town's responsibilities, do some legal research. To, uh, did we do? Maybe not in that case, but things that somebody that we could have delegated to somebody else in order to deal with it. So we that was a couple of hours of our, each of us. So if if a person could just full time take away a full time amount of that, it would take a lot of pressure off of us. I don't know if it would take it all off. But that's also why we have um, you know an assistant in here for the town administrator, whether it's full time, part time, or um, an assistant for the entire office. And especially if there's grants involved in the position, it seems like an assistant could do a lot of the legwork on that, while the town administrator is working on other projects. Yeah, Paul. So I'm Paul Hannon, and it's been 15 years since I sat up there, and so things have changed a lot. I have a specific memory of talking to Ann saying, Ann, you should run for the select board. Piece of cake. He did say that. She called me a year later, and I will repeat what she called me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the first big issue to come along is the East Montpelier Fire Department. And That's right. Building, and that sucked up a whole lot of time. And Were you on together? Were you and Ann on together? For, for at least a year. Yeah, I think yeah. just a year. But, uh, but I, I got off before that got too hot. <laughs> I guess my point is, in 15 years, things have gotten absolutely nuts. And, and I'll lay some of that at the feet of the legislature. Uh, oh, let's let the towns do it. Oh, they'll figure out how to do it. Oh, here's something they can do. And, you know, I, in my worst, in my most cynical moments, I think, gosh, have we outgrown town government, even. But I'm not going there, so don't worry. I, I do think, knowing this town, knowing the characters and the personalities in here, I don't think a town manager position is what we want. I just, I just think not having that direct control and not having the ability to say, hey, this isn't working, you're down the road more effortlessly. Uh, isn't isn't right for this town. I think the administrator would be great. I think we do need it. I guess maybe I should start with that. I think something's got to change uh, because I've watched, I, you know, listened to Sharon for six years or however long she was on. And it's it's just crazy. And, and as you pointed out, it would be nice if you didn't have to be retired or not really working full time to, to step up to the plate and do some of this stuff. So. Um, 
And like I said, I think, I think the administrator, with some pretty good assistance, I don't have an opinion right now whether it should be full time or half time, but I think, I think you got to go there. So. Yeah, that makes sense to me as well. It seems like the jump to a town manager is a huge leap into a bit of the unknown, whereas the well, administrator is a good step in the right direction and a much less risky one. And, and I, I want to avoid policy by anecdote, but I've had some anecdotes that I didn't like what I saw town managers doing and select boards not being able to rein them in. So I'm a little jaundiced on that, especially for a town this side. David. Just to reiterate that, I think there's been more town manager lawsuits in the state of Vermont over contracts <laughs> than any other position. Because they, they get fired and they have a three year contract and they want all that money off the front. Okay. Let me, uh, Tegan, are we getting any hands raised over there? No, no? not at the moment. Nothing in the chat? Okay. No. Yes. I think Gabrielle touched on it a little bit already, but just the, you know, he was just saying, like, it has to be a sustainable job, right? So it has to be something that doesn't burn out that person. And I think the town manager, how you were saying it has the prestige that is often a high turnover. Someone moves to a town and they think it's going to be this great job and then it burns them out and it stresses them out. I think there definitely has to be some real care taken if that position is created for it to be a fulfilling job for that person as well. And for the administrative assistance. I know in my own work that I do, the, pe the new people that we hire, we give them all the crappy stuff right away. Like, <laughs> it's not that fun. Like They don't want to do that forever, right? They want to still be able to participate in some of the more rewarding parts. Um, I think that's something that definitely should be thought about because it's very expensive to have a brand new town manager mm -hmm. and then next year have another brand new mm -hmm. town manager. There's a lot of onboarding that would need to happen. Yeah. Um, I'm Daphne Larkin. Um, my question is, um, is this largely and ultimately a budgetary question? Th there's money in the budget right now. There's. Um, there's $146,500 that we do not have people in those positions. So, you know, hopefully that would cover a treasurer. The select board is going to be hiring a treasurer and the new position. But we, right now we have the road commissioner's position, which is not filled. Well, it's filled by volunteers, <laughs> but it's free. <laughs> so we haven't been spending that money. And then the DP, the, the director of public works, right, that's the, is in the budget, in for is 000. in the current budget, yeah. and that position isn't filled. So it might change it somewhat, but we don't know yet how much. Okay. Donna, did you have more to present? You had more things in your packet? I don't think so. I mean, people, you have the packet if, if you want to read through it and have questions, or you know, you're welcome to contact me, too. Um, so what would the next steps be if you get this feedback? That's a good question. I was not expecting everybody to be so um, coalesced around. <laughs> so I expected that we would continue this hearing unto another meeting. But it sounds to me like the town, at least those of you who are here, feel that we should move forward with this. So I think probably we go back to the drawing board with the feedback you've given us and come, and come up with a proposed job description mm -hmm. and proposed salary. And tax yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how we do that compared to what we've already got in the budget that we're not spending, but we can. Or what we've got in the budget that is what that we've far overspent yeah. from what was budgeted for. So, you know, that's going to have a tax impact, but it has nothing to do with hiring a town administrator. Yeah. I'd also like to unpack a little bit uh, more. Uh, the responsibilities and uh, between the manager slash road commissioner, which is uh, statutory, and then the town administrator. Um, I'd see that in the current flow charts, the town manager and road commissioner also has a road foreman um, in between the road crew uh, and the commissioner. Uh, and then the uh, town administrator has the road foreman and then uh, road crew members. 
Is there one that doesn't? I think they all do. Well, the road, the road foreman, um, the idea was that the road foreman would be the ones directing the road crew, and they'd know what's going on with the roads. But they, they would also be working on highway grants um, and other you know, paperwork things, especially in the summer. In the winter, they could be in a truck plowing. But I don't know how that works with the union, because like somebody said that a foreman can't also, that a road foreman can't also be um, a worker bee in the union, but I don't it's know. It's a little know. challenging because we have a, a tentative agreement that's confidential, so we can't really get into the right. details about it. But um, but generally, you know, it's it's still to the to the towns. It's the town's responsibility to define the roles that it wants, and so um, if it decides in the future um, that a road foreman commission or a position would would be created, then um, there's there's nothing really constraining that. It's just that if they're performing the work of a road crew member, then um, it needs to uh, it, it will then fall under the union contract. Um, mm -hmm. And, and frankly, you know, I think this is a pretty anecdotal and broad assumption, but the management of the contracts with the road crew for outside contractors, um, the management of road-related issues, construction, scheduling, hiring, all of those things are in and of themselves, I think, enough to be a full-time position if it also involves doing the work. And Very my concern so. would be making, relying too heavily, to Jamie's point, on a, on a foreman who would also have the responsibility of mm -hmm. filling out grants. I think that they would be involved in providing the quantitative information for yeah. them, but the organization and submission for them would still likely need to there's, that work is so critical that I, I don't think that we can make it a a side responsibility of somebody mm -hmm. who's also coordinating the road crew. Well, and maybe just you have a road commissioner like we used to. Yeah, well, then even a foreman, someone who's directing the road crew and even doing some of the mm -hmm. the grant work, grant prep work, um, mm -hmm. uh, the work on vehicles. I mean, there's, it's literally a full-time right. job just doing all those things. Yeah. And that pragmatically, if you get someone who's good at those type of skills, they're probably not going to necessarily be ones that want to jump into a truck at 3 a.m. and go plowing. Right, and right. then otherwise, if you have someone who's really got all those skills in a CDL, they're going to be really bummed out to be in the office all day. So, so. But I think the select board now knows exactly what, what's needed. Uh, in the highway department. Yeah, we got to tell what So, you know, you can look at, you can write a job description and call it whatever you want, but you know what has to get done. What was Toby's interim uh, title? Uh, grants Administrator. Highway Grants. Highway Grants. Grant. So I wonder if there's, so the manager, the town manager and road commissioner is the statutory position. I wonder if we have the administrator, if that person could also be the grants administrator as well. Um, so, or highways department road uh, grants administrator, or just general. That would be the idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I'll just say a word about like um, I, I lived in East Montclair <laughs> for quite some time before um, we moved to Callis, and they had a town administrator that um, was, in many ways, in my mind, he was a town manager, and he was, I believe, a lawyer by training. Like there, were, there was nothing sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There was nothing secondary about his position. He he was in many ways a leader of the town and 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 kept the select board on track, and and yet the select board was still very um, independent and <laughs> um, you know demanded a lot of of that person. So so I think a town administrator is not any one fixed thing. I mean any of these positions are going to depend a lot on the skill set and the personality and the you know, the, the communication skills and all those kinds of things of, of the person that we, that we um, would maybe hire. So it's, yeah, and I had exactly the same question. Why couldn't a town administrator be a road commissioner? That there's nothing to prohibit it, especially if the focus of that road commissioner is highway grants administrator as opposed to plowing at 3 in the morning. Yeah. So I'd like to make a suggestion. The recording in progress. Come on, take it. It's uh, so down. 
Um, I, I, I think we've got a, a good direction from all of you, and I really appreciate that, and I appreciate your support. We need, as I said, to go back now and start talking about what this might look like and come back to you with something like that. And I understand that something I hadn't planned on needs to be talked about tonight. And we've got a little over 10 minutes before we have to do, turn to setting the tax rate. So I, am I correct in this? Some people are here where they want to talk about the East Callis Dam. Yeah. So would it be all right if we ended this discussion for now and let these people express their concerns? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Who would like to speak about that? Thank you, Donna. Yes, thank oh, you. Donna, yes, thank you so much. Is it you, Karen? Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Karen. <laughs> um, I just wanted to bring to the, everyone's attention that this, this dam is also uh, in need of extensive repairs, and also um, just how important it is to the town in general, but to East Callis Village. And um, the people that own it are tending to want to wash their hands of the whole thing, um, to walk away from it, as he said today when I was talking to him. Um, let the state tear it down. Um, I don't. I don't know what that looks like. He he doesn't seem to want to to be involved in any kind of committees to get it, you know, to repair it and all that. Like like what went on. I mean, he just kind of wants to walk away. So I don't know what what anybody would want to do about that. Um, I think that if somebody wanted to form a committee or whatever, look into that, he would be, that would be okay with him, but he, he does not want to do anything. To uh, uh, what's our time frame for fixing it? I'm not really sure. Uh, I was hoping that we could all have a meeting of concern, these, whoever, town residents, Catalyst residents, maybe some of you guys would come to talk to him about it. Um, he doesn't live here full time. He's an out of time, he just comes and goes. Um, he's gone again now until Friday. Um, I don't know. I mean, if everyone, if there is no interest in doing this, then I guess it'll just go away. But I don't know. Also, don't know what that means. What that looks like for the whole, <coughs> the whole historic village and the whole town in general. Okay. Jamie, you got thoughts about this? Uh, Jamie, I know was, everyone's really tired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Betty, yeah, too. Yeah. You've been very involved. Both of you have been very involved in the Curtis Pond Dam. I've had some emails back and forth with the owners, and my experience is sort of the same, that their, their inclination is to have the state take it down unless a community group came together. Um, my experience with, I, I didn't talk to Ben Green of Dam Safety about the East Callis Dam myself, but my experience with him in the Curtis Pond Dam is that depending on the state of the dam, if, if a dam in Vermont gets so dangerous that there's con immediate concern of downstream, you know, loss of life or property or significant damage, they'll require it to be taken down in a in a quick time frame and if if it's just sort of you know yeah it's in bad shape but it's probably not going to go this summer if there's a group working on it they usually give some flexibility right and they say you know we'll keep watching it over the next couple of years but as long as there's a plan moving forward they give you a little leeway in, I in getting there. I don't think that they told him he, he had to take it down. Right. They, they were just recommending that it yeah. be taken down or um, be fixed, I guess. But they were recommending taking it down to him as far mm -hmm. as which is what the state is pushing for all things. Yes. Right. So that's yeah. just the standard. <laughs> I did talk to engineers that said 
You don't need to do that. It can be fixed, it can be saved. Um, the, the last engineer I talked to was very positive about that, that it could be fixed. Did he mention a number? 350,000. Yeah. How much? Say again. 350. Well, Wasn't it like 50 for the engineering? Every time you talk to him, the number goes up. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard to know that. That was our experience. <laughs> 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 it too. It continues. It's a million, I'm thinking. No, but it was in the like 200 or 300. That was in, it was a very low risk dam, and then when the event happened, I think they upgraded that well, to I like think they a, upgraded it to a higher, a higher risk right. because the sides have some Before this, this leaking yeah. event even Significant happened. risk, yeah. I think, is yeah. the category. Yeah. yeah, from low risk to significant risk is how it was. I, I would just observe that the amount of money raised for the store in the East Calus is incredible to me, just absolutely yeah. amazing. Much more than we raised for the Maple Corner store, and you know, I would think the community could, you know, find interested parties and start raising money. Well, this money is the first thing that, that we started to talk really talk about this. You know, like he didn't put it out there, didn't tell anyone any of this, and finally he's like, you need to put this out there, to people, if and people care about this. And to be clear, the store raised a lot of money through a lot of historic grants. It wasn't a lot of money that came from community members. I mean, we did our best to raise money, but it was not where the bulk of the money came from. Most of that came from state federal but, grants. But still, there was a good chunk of donated money. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, Jamie, how did the Curtis Pond Dam Association get started? Did it, it, does it require like one or two people to say, hey, we're going to do this? Yeah, so the Curtis Pond Association actually formed a couple years before we started working as a group on the dam. And so it was an existing organization and it had filed for state tax ID number and all that. Um, and, the, and it was. It was three or four people sitting around saying we should really have an association. Well, and it's a 501c3, isn't it? It's not. Okay. It's not. It's an LLC, I think. Okay. It's like the lowest level. Um, and the community center has acted as a fiscal sponsor for collecting uh, donations. But, yeah, it was really, you know, started with two or three people and grew to four or five and then 12 and it's ebbed and flowed. But so I would see... A, first step, there's been a, a little flurry of emails on, or posts on Front Porch Forum. And so I would think, you know, emailing everybody who posted or who you know is interested and saying, let's have a meeting. Let's talk about this. Let's see if we collectively have the, the energy and capacity to really launch a, a campaign. And if a, if a core group sets up a meeting and puts it on front foot forum and a lot of people come or, you know, just to sort of gauge energy, I think that um, there are a lot of people who would want to see it uh, repaired. And I think it's a, you know, realistically, I know from experience, it's a heavy lift. Um, the other questions I had is, um, and Toby's not here, but um, I'd be curious what the fire departments think. Like, how, how reliant are they on that access point? And if that's a, a critical piece of their, you know, yeah. capacity in that Easy part of town, mm -hmm. then that changes the dynamic a little bit. It also mm -hmm. opens up more money sources, doesn't right. it? Right. Yeah. 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 So, to me, that would be sort of a first big question to uh, find out. I have a question about the dam that maybe one of you all can answer. Is I read that it's hydroelectric. Is that true? Uh, yeah, there's a small plant there. I thought you could run in a few years. It's still there. Okay, so that's an orphan, that's an orphan power plant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Houghton K built that for years. Who? Houghton K. He was an electrician. He powered the mill in his house with the power from it. And the little house behind, I think, too. Mm -hmm. 
Any idea like what its output was historically or anything? Thank you. Because I wonder an if a little housewife. A house or two. A house or two, okay. So not right for it's not gonna house. light up the town. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well it might have sufficient head. It, it may just have a small turbine so that the new, new turbines are more efficient and could potentially power the water system. <laughs> yeah, down. Whatever. Yeah. That uh, the East Callus. Uh, yeah, uh, the East Callus area. Okay. And then and I just the village. Charlotte. Well, the historical. It, it it was a mill for a good long time. So historically, it certainly operated enough to be a commercial venture that served not just East Callus but the whole area. Um, and, and that was quite significant. And then in the 50s, who was anything about the furniture factory that was on the river? Just, I don't, I think the penstock from the dam helped support the furniture factory, which burned down. Do you know this? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, a bigger generating plant down in the middle of the river with a large, bigger head, and then the little one up near the, near the dam. Right, so but the bigger one, the bigger uh, mill, uh, factory, did depend on the pond to power the, uh, to give the power to the penstock so that it could, so it, it I don't, I'm not sure what history has to do it, with it, but there is significant history. So, but our treasure has arrived and we're going to need to shift gears in a minute, but it, it sounds like it, we've got to identify some people to lead this effort. Um, and if nobody steps forward, uh, I guess we lose the pond. Don't look at me. <laughs> I will come to the meeting. <laughs> Start with yeah. the meeting. Start with the start meeting. meeting. See who shows up. Yeah. And I would put pretty pretty early into that conversation. What what do you think the you know get, the Curtis Ponds uh, the management of the Curtis Pond has shifted uh, to to the town as a and and that's a pretty big responsibility for the, the town to uh, assume and and now work through um, and that, that was a complicated process and so I think. That the the calculus around the East Callis Dam uh, could could be different, or could be similar relative to it as an asset to the community and to mm -hmm. uh, the infrastructure. So, I would get think about like what what do you think the long term management of the dam uh, means, and and who what that entity is, uh, and and what the responsibility is for continuing to maintain it as an asset. Right. Yeah. And, and part of that is a frank conversation with the owners about, you know, if, if the community steps up and puts in all this energy and raises money, is it just giving the money to the owners to fix it? Or is there a shift in ownership of the dam? And whether that's to a community group or to the town, those are some of the fairly early questions to at least start and you're, thinking about. You guys, I'm sure, over on the other side of town are willing to offer your help and expertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I'll yeah. come to a meeting if we can. And yeah, um, yeah several members, core members of the Curtis Pond Association have said they'd help and advise. Thanks. Maybe we should start like a consulting firm. <laughs> <laughs> I need another job. We <laughs> start to recoup maybe some of the costs of dam reconstruction. All right, we're going to shift gears now to your tax rate.